The UK government is promising to look at a call for a strengthening of the rules being introduced to protect bank customers' deposits from the bank's riskier trading divisions, the so-called ring-fencing of retail banking. The Parliamentary Commission on Banking says government proposals to separate the two sides of the business don't go far enough. The Business Secretary, Vince Cable, says the coalition could still amend the draft bill, but it doesn't want to go back to square one. The last thing we want now is to reopen the whole issue, to reinvestigate it, to create more uncertainty. We've got a path forward if if there are practical proposals for strengthening it and for preventing uh, avoidance of the objectives of the legislation. Obviously, we've got to take those seriously. Well, let's talk to Jonathan Davis, who's an economist and wealth manager. Good evening. Hello, Peter. Good idea? Uh, uh, Splitting um, high street banks from the casino banks in the city is a very good idea. Um, uh, That, however, is not what is in the bill. Uh, It is what the the committee, the banking committee, have been looking at, and they're saying, uh, make sure that if the banks play fast and loose with whatever rules are coming up, then that is what can be imposed upon them because currently it's not in the bill. Yeah, um, the Commission uses this lovely phrase, it wants the government to electrify the fence so that (laughs) banks won't try to uh, play games with the rules. Is that a very real possibility, that if you set the rules, they'll then spend a long time trying to get round them? Yes, absolutely. That's exactly what the banking industry does. Why would that be? Um, The banks are uh, profit-seeking animals and um, they make vast profits when things are going their way. They pay out vast bonuses when things are going their way Um, and they they play fast and loose with whatever lax rules there are and be under no illusion there are no tight rules on the financial services industry in the United Kingdom or indeed practically any country that I can think of. Yeah, uh, um, there are... I might add that when they lose money, we pick up the tab. When they make money, they put it in their back pocket. But, I mean, one, one, of, the, uh, one of the three aspects on which the government bases its proposals is to make sure that bank losses don't fall on depositors or taxpayers again yeah. and yeah. they and they and they've also made them keep more of their assets in cash in case there's a problem the Jonathan. the headlines that they're putting out um first of all none of this is likely to come until 2019 um, it was 2008 that we had the banking collapse, so over a decade, and uh, that's assuming that anything comes into play. That's the first thing. Uh, secondly, depositors are uh, pretty well assured anyway. Um, a couple uh, in one banking institution is guaranteed by the other taxpayers to the tune of £170,000. Now, all you have to do is have five or six banks and you're covered for a million pounds. Um, so, you know, depositors are looked after already. Yeah. No, no, the, the, the fact is the system as it is, and nothing here is suggesting a change, is that the taxpayers bail out the bankers. The depositors are basically looked after already. So there's not much change going on here. Jonathan, thank you. That's uh, economist Jonathan Davis on the plans to reform the banks.